Hi guys, I'm going to go through and um, talk to you about your revision for your P1 test on electricity and magnetism. And we're going to start with magnets and things you need to remember. So on a magnet, the magnetic field is the area where the magnetic field is working okay and it shows magnetic force okay and we used iron filings to show the magnetic field and if you remember the shape looks like this okay and what we figured out was that the field lines went from north to south. Now you can use a compass to do that. So the field lines come out of the north and they go into the south. And in between they go round. Okay? Now, if you put two, a north and a south pole together, they will attract. If you put a north and a north together, or a south and a south, they will repel. And you know that magnetism is a non-contact force, because basically you don't need to touch these magnets together to feel the force. And if you remember from the lesson, you could, when you push the magnets together, you could feel that force without them touching. That is a, a non-contact force. Another example is gravity. So you don't have to be standing on the earth to feel the gravitational pull. You can jump out of a plane and it will still pull you towards the earth. Okay. Last thing you need to think about for magnets is the magnetic field of the earth. So the Earth's magnetic field looks like a bar magnet. So it has these loops that come out. Okay, and it's slightly tilted on its side. And what we need to remember is at the poles, so at the poles of the Earth and at the poles of a bar magnet, where the field lines are closest together, that is the strongest. So the magnetic field force is strongest at the poles of the magnet. Okay? Right, next we're going to have a quick look at electromagnets. So electromagnets, when you have electricity, When you have electricity, then that the wire becomes magnetic, okay? So what we did was we did an experiment where we had an iron nail, like so, and we put a wire around it, a coil of wire. And that coil of wire, we put a current through, and it became magnetic. Now, if we want that um, magnetic strength to increase so if we want to increase the magnetism or increase the magnetic force we can do three things the first thing is what we did we introduced an iron nail because an eye iron is magnetic and so it makes that magnetic force stronger we can increase the number of coils okay. and we can also increase the current and we increase the current by increasing the potential difference of the cell or power supply so all of those things increase the electromagnetic effect now we're going to look a little bit at electricity now um, Let's look at static electricity first. So, in static electricity, 
what we did in the lesson was we had a rod and we rubbed the rod with a cloth and what happened when we rubbed the rod with the cloth was lots of electrons moved from the cloth to the rod. Because electrons have a negative charge, it left a positive charge on the cloth. So we've got lots of negative charges here. And we've got lots of positive charges here. So what happened was we used friction to move the negative electrons from the cloth to the rod. Now around the negative electrons there is a field, like a magnetic field, but it's an electric field. It's the, it's the area where we feel the electric force. Now, the field of an electron, because it's circular, looks like the spikes, spokes of a wheel. And the direction is inwards, because the electric field it shows you the direction by if you put a positive charge near it, what direction would it move? Now, a positive and negative charge is a flat. So the field is inwards. Like so. Oh, I've done that one outwards. If you had a, a positive charge in the middle, that would repel and so the fields go out. So let's just remind ourselves of that. Opposites, positive and negative, attract. So that's the same rule as magnets. If they're the same charge, they repel. Same as magnets. And then if you have a positive or a negative and no charge, so like a wall or something, they attract too. So that's about static electricity. Right, we're going to do a little bit about current and potential difference now. So actual electricity. So we need to remember that current is the flow of electrons in a circuit. Okay. It is measured in amps. And the symbol for amps is A. The symbol for current is I, because remember it's intensity de courant, so um, it was initially um, discovered by a French person, so that's why the symbol I. And the device we use to measure it with is an ammeter. Now we have to put the ammeter in series with what we're measuring, so that means it would go next to it. So it goes in series. And we have conductors and insulators. So in a conductor current flows really easily so we have lots of free electrons to move. In an insulator there are no free electrons to move so you don't get current flowing and in fact as we just talked about the static electricity, to get the electrons to move, you have to apply a force of friction. That's your notes on current. Let's look at potential difference. So potential difference is sometimes called voltage and it's got the symbol capital V. Okay, if it's a battery, it is a measure of the push of the battery, so how hard it can push the current round. If it is a component, it is a measure of how much electrical energy it uses. 
it is measured in volts, which handily has the symbol big D as well, and it is measured with a volt meter. Okay, and that volt meter has to go in parallel with what you're measuring, so across like so. Because you've got V and V here, it would be a bit confusing. So if I wrote this, that would mean the potential difference is 3 volts. Last one I want to look at is resistance. Now resistance links current and potential difference. And what resistance is, is it stops the flow of current. What it's caused by is in a wire, we've just talked about those free electrons, so here they are. But in a wire as well, you also have these fixed, big positive ions. They're basically the atoms of the wire. And what the electrons do is as they're travelling around, they bang into them. So this one will bang into this one, this one bangs into this one. And the hotter the wire gets, or the more electrons you try and push through, the more collisions there are with these fixed ions, and so the resistance goes up. Okay, so if you increase the current, you increase the frequency of collisions which increases the resistance. Now, resistance has an equation. So resistance is equal to potential difference divided by current. So resistance, potential difference, current. So if I say to you, right, well, we're going to use mains voltage. So mains voltage is the plug. And you've got a lamp plugged in and it's using 230 volts. And we are going to have a, a current flowing of 5 amps. What is the resistance of the bulb? So we've got 230 volts. On the voltmeter, it's reading 230 volts. And the ammeter is reading 5 amps. What is the potential uh, the resistance? So R is V divided by I. So V is 230. I is 5. So 230 divided by 5 will give you your answer. Okay, so on your calculator. I'm going to do 230 divided by, let me do that again so you can see, 230 divided by 5 equals, okay, and it's 46. And the U unit for resistance is ohms. You've got head, it looks like a head and shoulder, okay? Right, so let's look at some different circuits and how the resistance is in them. This is a series circuit. It's got two bulbs next to each other. This is a high resistance circuit. I'm going to say this is three volts. Okay. Now because the current flowing around here has to go through both bulbs, okay, both those bulbs will receive 1.5 volts each. The resistance will be the total of those two bulbs, okay? So those two bulbs are getting 1.5 each. But if I put them in a parallel circuit where the bulbs are on top of each other, the current, so I've still got three volts here. The current that goes this way has only got one bulb to give its energy to. So that bulb gets three volts. And the current that goes this way has only got one bulb to give it to two, so that bulb gets three volts. So in this parallel circuit, both bulbs get three volts and it is brighter. 
because they're getting more voltage, so more energy. I do a bit of a hybrid, like so. So this has got a series element and a parallel element. Okay, these two bulbs get 1.5 each, because that's like this one where they've shared it. So they'll be quite dim, but this bulb here will get three bulbs. That it will be quite bright because it's on its own. So it won't be, this bulb will be as bright as these ones and this bulb will be as bright as these ones. So remember this is a series circuit and this is a parallel circuit. Right, just a few more things to talk about. You just need to remember a few of the symbols. So you need, this is a cell, it's 1.5 volts. This would be a battery, because it's more than one cell. Or you could do this. So we've got a cell, battery, battery. Right. Ammeter, to measure current. Voltmeter, to measure potential difference. And a switch. You also might have a bowl. You might have a resistor. Okay. And just checking my list. I think that's all of the ones you'll need to know. So make sure you remember those. Okay. If you have one cell like this, one cell is 1.5 volts. If I put two together, you have to add those two together. So you've got 1.5 plus 1.5. That would be 3 volt battery. If I had 3, I've got 1.5, 1.5 and 1.5, which makes a 4.5 volt battery so you're adding them together however if you do this what you're in effect doing is putting the battery in the wrong way or the cell in the wrong way so you've got a positive and a negative and a negative and a positive that's what these lines mean and if you put two of the same lines together so you could do it this way as well okay you get no volts all right so you've got to put them the right way around. It's got to be positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So hopefully the video helps you with your um, test. You need to perhaps watch the video, do the practice test. You could watch the video again. You could pause it and make notes. And then only when you're ready, you need to do the test and test conditions. Best of luck.